Hello, yes, Nigel Farage has only himself to blame. To blame for the mess you kips in. There's a video at the end, um, it's of Jared Batten and Tommy Robinson. It's regarding Jared Batten, UKIP leader, appointing Tommy Robinson as advisor to UKIP on rape gangs and prison reform. I'm sure that'll go down well with the public. Not an advisor on raising the minimum wage or better conditions in the workplace uh, for workers and whatever, but seedy, distasteful topics, issues like uh, rape gangs and uh, prison reform. And what happens here is that those two seedy issues bounce back on UKIP as a mirror association. Do you get me? It associates UKIP with it. It's a mirror association. That's what it's called. People will subconsciously associate UKIP with rape gangs and prison reform and other seedy, distasteful issues they'd rather not talk about. People want answers to their problems, not, you know, uh, talking about rape and reform in prisons and whatever. So, that's been deliberate, that, without a doubt. And like I said before, Mr. Farage, you left UKIP too soon because you believe in democracy and Theresa May would have to deliver Brexit, but nothing could be further from the truth. And what's happened now? You've handed UKIP over to the enemy, like Nick Griffin handed the BNP over to the enemy. It's, it's happening to UKIP now. Don't rule out, Mr. Farage, they don't expel you like they did Nick Griffin. Rise. They don't want you leader of UKIP again. Not that I believe you're ever going to get a chance to be leader again. His position now is cemented in UKIP and he's surrounded by fellow travellers that will back him up. You're finished now, Mr Farage. 25 years of building up UKIP and campaigning to get out the European Union. Don't let it all be in vain. Don't let it demoralise you, don't become despondent, roll your sleeves up and get back in there, right? Because we can still win this, we can, right? Because the spies now and their modus operandi, they've, be all, they've all been named and shamed, haven't they, right? So once we get our act together, these fuckers are redundant, right? So anyway, as I say, oh, also the video at the end, Mr Farage, I, I meant to mention this, could have remembered. You're talking about you You brought the, the BMP, the far right down, single-handedly. Now, I don't know whether or not you're saying that to score brownie points, you know, off the powers that big, because you won't be getting any. They hate you as much as they hate me, right? So you're talking about you single-handedly uh, stopped the far right or BMP, whatever. You, you didn't. Hope not hate spies, searchlight spies, the government spies did. The ones that are now bringing UKIP down, how ironic. But you know if you did single-handedly stop the BMP, let's say, you want to be ashamed of yourself because all you've done is stop patriots trying to save their country. That's all you've done. But I believe this is a big wake-up call for you now. I think you really now are beginning to understand what's happening, right? Because, uh, you know, you're calling for a, uh, what is it now, uh, no confidence in... Uh, Jared Batten and asking, asking for him to be removed as leader so you must now know and understand what's happening and the forces we're up against but don't get despondent don't get demoralised roll your sleeves up unlike Nick Griffin roll your sleeves up and let's get back in there eh? OK, thank you. Well, English Defence League leader Tommy Robinson has been appointed as an advisor to the UKIP leader, Gerard Batten. The party said Mr Robinson, whose real name is Stephen Yaxley-Lennon, will advise on rape gangs and on prison reform. Mr Robinson is banned from joining UKIP under rules which bar former English Defence League and British National Party members. Well, UKIP's former leader, Nigel Farage, is calling for a vote of no confidence in Mr Batten after the appointment of Mr Robinson. He's been outlining his objections to Justin Webb on BBC Radio 4's Today programme. No, I wanted to talk about real issues, issues that politicians are afraid of, issues about uncontrolled mass immigration, illegal immigration, uh, yeah. the growth of terrorism across Europe, the huge mistakes that the EU made with but people coming across the Mediterranean. But you had posters with Syrian refugees who well, were never uh, really How do you know they were Syrian refugees and why were they refugees when almost every single one of them was a young male between 18 and 30 years old? Hardly any of them would ever have qualified as refugees. And I but, wanted to have these conversations, but to do so from a political party but that that's did the it point, isn't it? it's from the conversation. a non-racist... It's the conversation that leads to this and well, leads you, to the appointment well, of, if you of don't Tommy have this, If you don't have this conversation, you don't get parties like UKIP doing well, you don't get referendums uh, happening in the country, and then the far right does exist. If I've got one real achievement in British politics is that I did pretty much single-handedly kill off the BNP.
Nigel Farage. Well, let's uh, go over now to our correspondent, Jonathan Blake, uh, who's with Gerard Batten in Westminster. Jonathan. Yes, thank you, Anita. I'm pleased to say Gerald Batten joins us here in Westminster. And let me ask you then to respond to what Nigel Farage has said, and that is that you're taking the party in what he calls a shameful direction and that they should get rid of you. Well, I'm surprised that Nigel's got such an interest in what UKIP's doing, seeing as he walked away two years ago and hasn't displayed any interest in it whatsoever since. Um, and he re said recently said that he was going to give 100% of his effort to leave means leave, which means 0% to UKIP. So I've had the job of saving the party from disappearing into oblivion, which I've done. I've done a good job of that. We've now got membership rising, we've got money rising, we're comfortably in the black, we've got donors giving us money, and we're up in the polls, we're up to 8%. So I actually think I'm making the right decisions in what I'm doing. He says you should be focusing on the broad issue of immigration. I've been focusing on Brexit, which is why we're going to organise this great big Brexit betrayal, Brexit means exit march on the 9th of May. Uh, we are going to try and get tens and tens of thousands of people out to that. And my objective there is to encourage those people to come and join UKIP because the only thing that makes any difference in this whole debate is how many votes can you take away from the Tories and Labour at the next general election. That's the only thing they care about. And that's my goal. That's what I'm doing. And I'm not doing bad at the moment. Why then in the meantime are you appointing Tommy Robinson as an unpaid advisor? Well, he's merely a personal advisor uh, on two particular issues. I want him to advise me on the rape gang phenomena, which he knows a great deal about, and uh, conditions in prisons and prison reform, which he also unfortunately has first-hand knowledge of. Um, so I have two important areas. I have advisors on all kinds of subjects and, and policy spokesmen. He doesn't need to be a member of the party to do that, uh, but he's going to help me in that so that we can develop policy going forward. People would say that he's Islamophobic, he's blamed the religion of Islam and the Muslim community as a whole and held them accountable uh, for terrorist attacks in the UK. Do you agree with him on that? And by associating with him and calling on his advice, are you not Islamophobic in the same, in the same way? Islamophobic is a made-up word that doesn't mean anything. It's an irrational fear. I don't have an irrational fear of Islam, neither does Tommy Robinson. It's a prejudice you. against a religion. It's not a prejudice. Uh, we have never said anything about Muslims. We do not talk about Muslims. Tommy Robinson doesn't. We talk about Islamic ideology and criti critique that ideology because everybody out there who's watching this show who wants to know knows that the reasons we have these terrorist attacks all around the world is because they derive those ideas from Islamic ideology and we there have to understand that and confront that. There are plenty of other people you could ask for advice on on the phenomenon of, of, of child sexual abuse in the UK and rape gangs and life in prison. Why are you asking Tommy Robinson about that? He put his life on the line and done this. He's high profile. He can bring a lot of people to that march on the 9th, which he's going to do. He's going to assist us in that. Uh, so everybody knows what he stands for on that. He's actually somebody who's been persecuted by the state because of his views. I was in court when that case was referred up to the Attorney General because the judge knew there was no case whatsoever. And Tommy Robbins was kept in prison for, in solitary confinement for four months because of that. So I think he's a good person to have on side. A lot of people respect his uh, stand on things and his courage. It isn't about him. And it isn't about Nigel Farage. This is, well, you're appointing him as an advisor and you're responding to the criticism of that. So it is about him today in part. He is a convicted criminal. On the first count of contempt of court, he was convicted got, and served that sentence. convicted criminals sitting in the House of Lords making laws over us. Nobody seems very bothered about that. He's got a few minor convictions. So I think that I'm not going to uh, take, you know, lots of people have had criminal convictions in their past. That doesn't mean to say they can't do something good in the present and the future. And By bringing him into the past, into the fold of the party, albeit as an unpaid advisor, you're flying in the face of your own rules which ban former members of the EDL He's and the BNP. In the party. He isn't in the party. We have a, and by the way, we have a prescribed list. There are members of ex-members of the BNP sitting as Labour and Conservative councillors. We don't do that. We have a prescribed list and what I've asked the party to do is to consider waiving that list, which we can do under our constitution, in one particular case, his. And I, in, in a spirit of democracy, said that should be put to the members and the members should be allowed to vote on that. So I'm proceeding in this in a very democratic way uh, and it will be the members that decide that, not me. Should the focus now not be on Brexit, though, as the NEC of your party seem to maintain? And just finally, 
Can I put it to you, if you, if there was a vote of no confidence in you, and Nigel Farage, Farage has suggested there would be, do you think you'd win it? Round the table at the NEC meeting last Sunday, every one of those NEC members acknowledged that I had saved the party and put it back on the strong footing that it is now. Some of them may disagree with me on this particular issue, but they know that it's down to me that this party has survived, not Nigel Farage or anybody else, and they will want me to continue. I'm absolutely certain of that. Gerald Batten, thank you very much for joining us on BBC News. Back to you. Jonathan, thank you very much. John